since 1966. This is NBC4's News Conference with Conan Nolan, Southern California's longest running public affairs program. On this edition of News Conference, what went wrong? After being held up as an example for the rest of the nation, now California is seeing a surge in COVID-19 cases. Is it a matter of time before we return to the stay-at-home order from March? We talk with Hilda Solis, the vice chair of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, and state senator Steve Glazer, the first legislator now calling on the governor to shut the state back down. With most school districts opting against in-person instruction this fall, the question now for parents, what will it take for students to return to class? A lot, says Cecily Mayart cruz the new president of United Teachers of Los Angeles, which put out a document detailing the training, safety procedures, and investment they want addressed, including tax hikes, defunding police, and a halt to new charter schools. Good morning and welcome to the Tom Brokaw News Center here at Universal City. I'm Conan Nolan. Hope you're safe and well. First up, the Honorable Hilda Solis, former member of Congress, former Labor Secretary under Barack Obama, and the current Vice Chair of the LA County Board of Supervisors. So, Supervisor, the state shut down early. We flattened the curve. It was problematic in LA County, but manageable. But now, as Vince Scully would say, the wheels are coming off the wagon. What happened? I think that uh, people became too relaxed. We may have also. Uh, anticipated that people were really going to conform to the health orders, telling people to wear masks, keeping their distance. And of course, people were, you know, sheltered for, for three months. And I think came uh, Memorial Weekend, people really felt like they could go out to the beach, they could take walks, they could gather with friends, they could do picnics and, and go to, to the bars and party and do whatever. And I really think that People did not fully understand what the rules of the game were. And now, unfortunately, we're having to, to come back. And it's really unfortunate because I feel, I feel very bad that so many people who, especially small businesses and others that were ready to, to go back to work and what have you, now have to come back in because, unfortunately, people were not playing by the rules. And that also goes for some of our employers because they also have an obligation to to help enforce and make sure that their employees are taken care of. And I think, you know, this, this virus is something that's so unusual. It's not as though it, it went away just because we lowered the curve. It's there. And now we know, as a matter of fact, that it can impact anyone, especially those 18 and 30 years of age. And it can be uh, devastating for a young person. Um, just to give you an example, I, I interviewed a young woman, 33 years old, who was an athlete, runs all the time, and has been doing it for five years. She went out for a run. She got COVID. She got symptoms. She's been uh, desperately ill, staying at home with COVID, and has had heart palpitations. Her lungs may be damaged. All kinds of different, uh, you know, horrors that are, that are coming about, and we're barely learning about what can happen to a young person. We know what happens when someone has other, uh, say, health impacts, obesity, asthma, high blood pressure, cancer, things of that nature. But a young person who's healthy and thriving, that's a different story. So this is something that we do have to take very seriously. Do we need to shut down again? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on answering that because it's not going to be my decision. It'll be based again on what our uh, public health director, Barbara Ferrer, as well as the governor. And I mean, to be honest, though, if the numbers continue to, to spike the way that they are, it's, it's very probable that that can happen. And I have to tell you, there are other counties that didn't help L.A. County because you had Ventura, you had Orange County that had opened everything up. Some didn't even have restrictions for masks. I mean, come on. You and I know we have families and people that live in those counties and go back and forth. So, I mean, the con contact rate there. I mean, I think also could have added and did add more to this. And also the fact that that's a mixed message when you see people on the beach in Ventura and Orange County and San Diego, and here in LA County, we locked down. We did the right thing, we tried our best, but people obviously didn't, didn't uh, pay attention as, as they should have. Uh, you mentioned the border counties having a different approach. Have you ever called up the Orange County Board of Supervisors and said, hey, we need a coordinated approach as they had in the seven counties in the Bay Area? I have not. I don't know. I don't know that that's going to have any impact, to be honest. I mean, even some of their school districts right now are saying they're going to open and they're not going to require masks. Well, what, what can I say about that, right? I gotta, I've got to watch what's happening here in L.A. County. And I hope 
And I know that some school districts are doing the right thing. They're gonna continue with distance learning, you know, through the internet, internet and do whatever they can to help our, our young people until we get satisfaction that people are gonna be safe. You can't continue to put people in harm's way. It shouldn't be just about economics. It's gotta be healthcare first. Once we get that straight, then you can open up the economy. Uh, if we're forced to shut down again, do you think people will listen and comply? My sense is I hope they do because our messaging is a lot stronger now. And we are also really going to be working with the state, hopefully in terms of how we can make people and businesses compliant. Because if you don't, if there's no, if there's no, how could I say, incentive for you to do the right thing, um, how are people going to conform? So I think you almost have to use the carrot and the stick approach. And the stick at this time may need to be pulled out a little bit here. Uh Right. Regarding enforcement, though, do you consider Sheriff Alex Villanueva an ally? I respect the rank and file. I will tell you that. I respect the rank and file because they cover a lot of my areas and unincorporated parts of the district. Um, I know he has a job to do. We differ on how to get it done, but I think we have tried to work with him. I know I have. Uh, but all I can say is, you know, the ball's in his court. Don't, but don't you need the sheriff's department as an aid in enforcement? Um, I, I think there's going to be other mechanisms used as well. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think he's going to be the only one. We're going to have to have our consumer and business affairs and also probably the, uh, you know, district attorney uh, be engaged with us. And we're going to also go along with what the governor has proposed in his task force that he's going to be convening. We want to be a part of that. That's going to be, that's going to be a big issue for us. How important are the next two weeks? Very critical, I would say the next three weeks, because if we see that there's an indication again that there's an uptick and it's uncontrollable, then the bed spaces are going to be crowded out, then we've got some problems. I hope not. I hope that doesn't happen, though, Conan. I'm, I'm praying that it doesn't. I really well, am. Uh, well, we're praying, too. L.A. County Supervisor Hilda Solis, <laughs> thank you for taking the time and you stay too. well. All right. You, too, and your staff. Thank you. One state lawmaker wants the governor to kick his dimmer switch to the curb. We talk with Bay Area State Senator Steve Glazier when we return.